So if I want to prove that s is an x-intercept, we want to solve for that. So let's divide everything by x minus r to get rid of that. x minus r is now on the bottom. Okay, And this becomes an r. That's an r now, not an s. Okay, We're dividing everything by x minus r. So divide both sides by x minus r. Those cancel. 0 divided by x minus r is just 0. So what we're left with is 0 equals x minus s. Okay, move the s to the other side, it becomes positive, therefore if s equals x, x must equal s. Okay, so we've just shown why r and s are the x-intercepts of y equals x minus r times x minus s. And you have to remember the x-intercept is going to have the opposite value of what you see inside these brackets. Okay, the r value of x minus 1 is actually positive 1 because this negative one is going to eventually be transported across the equal sign and the inter integer value is going to switch from a negative to a positive. Okay, now that we've established that, so we know how to find those x-intercepts, let's try and figure out how we can use those x-intercepts to find the coordinates of the axis of symmetry and the coordinates of the vertex of a parabola. Okay, In order to do that, we have to remember that parabolas are symmetrical. Okay, that's very, very, very important. Also, we have to remember that the x-coordinate of the vertex is on the axis of symmetry, okay, which passes through the midpoint of the line segment connecting the x-intercepts. That's a lot to take in, what I just said right there, so I'm going to go through and try and explain it a little bit slower and give you a little visual diagram so we can try and understand it. Okay, So let's take this parabola, for example. Okay. We know that it has x-intercepts of 5, let's say, let's say that's 5 on the x-axis, and negative 1, let's say that's negative 1. So I'm just going to draw a very, very rough parabola. Actually, I'll use the tool here so we can get a little bit more of an accurate one. Let's say that's the parabola there. I'll make sure it goes right through those x-intercepts. Okay. So let's say that's our parabola there. We know that this is at negative 5. Oh, that's at negative 1, sorry. We know that that's at negative 1 on the x-axis, and this is at positive 5. Okay? I know that parabolas are symmetrical, so I know that they have an axis of symmetry that goes through the vertex. Oh, let me first plot that vertex. Vertex, the maximum point on the parabola. I know that the axis of symmetry is the vertical line that goes right through that vertex. Okay? And it divides that parabola into two equally symmetrical parts. So let me just try and shade those. So this part to the left of the axis of symmetry is equally symmetrical to the part to the right of the axis of symmetry. Okay? So that axis of symmetry essentially divides this parabola in half. Okay, so if I want to figure out what the equation of the axis of symmetry is, I need to figure out what x-coordinate it goes through. Okay, when you've heard me saying that the axis of symmetry goes through the middle of the parabola, that should kind of ring some bells that maybe we want to find midpoint. Okay, if we find the midpoint of negative 1 and 5, so the average value of negative 1 and 5 will tell us where is exactly in the middle of those two points. If I find the middle of negative 1 and 5, that will tell me the equation in my axis of symmetry. Okay? So, the middle of negative 1 and 5, so the average of negative 1 and 5, to find the average of something, you just add them and divide by the number of terms you're trying to find the average of. So we're trying to find the average of two terms, so we divide by 2. So negative 1 plus 5, divided by 2 will give us the average there. It will give us the middle of those two points. So that will give us 4 over 2, which will equal 2. So let me just extend this a little bit. So that will equal 2. Okay. So we know that this is point 2 on the x-axis, this point right there. Now every point on this vertical line will be at 2 something. Okay, The coordinates of every point on this line are 2 something. This is 2 something. 
this is two something. This is two something. And we know by definition the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. So the vertex must have coordinates two something. Okay? So this axis of symmetry is in fact helping us find the coordinates of the vertex. We know this axis of symmetry is x equals 2. A vertical line that goes through 2 on the x-axis, the equation of that line is x equals 2 because it never goes left or right. The x value of every point on this line is 2, okay? And the coordinates of every point on the line are 2 something, okay? As we go up, those y coordinates are going to increase. As we go down, they'll decrease. But those x coordinates, the x coordinate of 2 is never, ever, ever going to change, okay? The equation of that axis of symmetry is x equals 2. The axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. So we know, therefore, that the vertex must have an x-coordinate of 2, but we're not sure about the y yet. Oh. So let's go ahead and try and figure out... Let's, let's write a rule for that first. Okay. So here's a little bit of a bigger drawing of that. Okay. So... I'll just explain that again one more time really quickly. Okay, so we have negative 1 and 5 are our x-intercepts. The axis of symmetry goes through the middle of the parabola. Okay, so if I find the midpoint of negative 1 and 5 by adding them and dividing by 2, that will give me the axis of symmetry. Okay, it'll give me the x-coordinate that a vertical line goes through. So it'll tell me that that axis of symmetry is x equals 2. I know that that axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. Therefore, the vertex must have an x-coordinate of 2. We don't yet know the y-coordinate. Okay, so our rule for finding the axis of symmetry is to add the x-coordinate, the x-intercept, sorry, add the x-intercepts and divide by 2. That's our rule. We know R and S stand for the x-intercepts. So if we add the x-intercepts and divide by 2, that will give us the axis of symmetry. Okay? And in other words, to find the axis of symmetry, you just find the midpoint of the line joining the x-coordinates. X okay? So we find the midpoint of the line that joins negative 1 and 5. Midpoint is at x equals 2. So we added negative 1 and 5 and divided by 2. Okay? So the general rule, add the x-intercepts, divide by 2, that gives us the axis of symmetry. In this case, it was negative 1 plus 5 divided by 2, which was 4 divided by 2, which was 2. Okay? And remember, R and S are the x-intercepts. If this part of the video was confusing, please go back and watch it again, okay? This is a difficult concept to understand as to why why we're finding the uh, axis of symmetry and how we found that, okay? So we found the axis of symmetry. It's x equals 2. I should write x equals there. Okay, our axis of symmetry is x equals 2. And I've explained to you now that the x-coordinates of all the points on this axis of symmetry are going to be 2. We know the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex, so the x-coordinate of the vertex must be 2. So if I want to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, I have to substitute the x-value of 2 into the equation and solve for y. Let me just explain this process one more time. So remember, the axis of symmetry is a vertical line that goes through the vertex. Okay. Therefore, the axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex. This means that the x-coordinate is 2. To find the y-coordinate of the vertex, substitute 2, the x-value, which is the axis of symmetry, into the equation. Okay? So let's sub in 2 for x. So y equals 2, replace x with a 2. Once again, replace the second x with a 2. And then we just have to remember our bed mass. So we'll do the brackets first. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. Continue solving. When we multiply, it doesn't matter the order we multiply in. 
We can do 2 times negative 3 first, or negative 3 times 3 first. It doesn't matter. I'll do 2 times negative 3. That gives us negative 6. I can then multiply that by 3. And that gives me negative 18. Okay. So the x coordinate of my vertex is 2. The y coordinate of my vertex is negative 18. Therefore, my vertex, well, my vertex is going to be 2, eight, 2, negative 18. There's my vertex. Oh, I forgot to close my bracket. There we go. 2, negative 18. That's the vertex of the parabola. Okay? That's the vertex of the parabola with x intercepts of 5 and negative 1. Good. So, now that we've established how we determine the x-intercepts and how we use those x-intercepts to find the axis of symmetry and the vertex, let's just quickly go back and make sure we're good at finding the x-intercepts, okay? Let's do one of these the long way just so we can remember why R and S are the x-intercepts. So to find the x-intercepts, first step, set y to 0. That says x minus 3, sorry, it's not very clear. But, yeah, I should write it clear. Okay, set y to 0. Good. Good. Okay. Now, we know that the parabola has two x-intercepts. Um, so, let's solve for the x minus 3 intercept first. So, in order to do that, we will get rid of the x minus 2 by dividing it by both sides. The x minus 2's will cancel. 0 divided by x minus 2 is just 0, because 0 divided by anything is 0. So I'm left with 0 equals x minus 3. This negative 3 is going to be moved to the other side of the equal sign, so it's going to become positive. So I'm going to have positive 3 equals x, okay? So you see how the x-intercept is the opposite integer of what we saw in the original equation, okay? We see a negative 3 in here, so our x-intercept is actually positive 3 because it has to be transported across the equal sign. If I now go ahead and do solve for the opposite one, let's go back, okay? So now let's solve for this x-intercept, for the x minus 2. So we'll divide everything by x minus 3. These will cancel. 0 divided by anything is 0. So we'll get 0 equals x minus 2. And now this 2, this, sorry, this negative 2 has to be moved across the equal sign, so it's going to become positive. So I now have positive 2 equals x. And you can see a positive 2 is the opposite of the integer we saw in the original equation because that negative 2 had to be moved across the equal sign. Okay? Now we can kind of see the shortcut. Okay? So let's do a couple questions using the shortcut. So